What is the capital city of France? I know what you're thinking. Wow, what an easy, what an easy question. So let me ask you this then. What is the capital city of Iceland? Any takers? Now you're thinking. Now you're going, okay, what is, what is the capital city of Iceland? Okay, let's, let's go through it. It's, it's not Paris. Obviously, that's in France. It's not Berlin. That's in Germany. It's not Brussels. That's in Belgium. It's not Lisbon. That's in Portugal. What is the capital city of Iceland? Now, if I told you, for example, that, hey, you know, there is a chance that Reykjavik is the capital city of Iceland. You might think, okay, Reykjavik does sound like a city that could be in Iceland. So I'll take my chances and say that that is the capital city of Iceland. And you'd be right, Reykjavik is the capital city of Iceland. But see that process that we just went through, you and I, we just thought of all the different options. Okay, it's not this and it's not this one. It could be this, but most, most more likely it's that one. That is exactly how ChatGPT works. Today I'm going to be talking about artificial intelligence, AI, the hot topic. But what exactly do I mean when I say the word AI? Well, when I talk about AI, I'm referring to a very specific type of AI model called a large language model. And that is the, this is the type of model that ChatGPT is. And so generally, anytime you hear somebody talking about AI these days, they are referring to this type of model. Now, I've been following AI and ChatGPT since it's released a year and a half ago, almost religiously. And I've helped millions of people around the world understand what's happening in the space and how fast it's progressing. And I think one of the most important things we have to understand, even at a high level, is how it works. So, when I ask ChatGPT, what is the capital city of France? How does it know that the answer is Paris? Well, the first thing you need to understand about ChatGPT is that it generates its responses word by word. And so how does it know which words to generate? For every word, ChatGPT creates a list of words and assigns a probability to each and every word. And for every word, it will create this list of words and assign a probability. And it is based off of this probability that it answers your questions. It is essentially a next word prediction model. And I'll tell you a fun fact. ChatGPT doesn't always take the most probable word. If it did, it sounds like complete gibberish and it sort of goes around in circles. So how does it work so well? Well, every few words, ChatGPT will take a random word from its list of words and use that in the output. We have no idea why, it, why, this, why this works so well, but it is because of this randomness that ChatGPT sounds so human and works so well. And the funny thing is, the creators of ChatGPT themselves do not understand why this randomness works. So let's take a different question. Let's say I ask it, write me a speech in the, in the voice of a school captain. How does ChatGPT know how to sound like a school captain? Let me try and paint a picture for you. So imagine a 3D space, a 3D area, and we've got an X, Y, and Z axes. And within this 3D area, and we'll call this 3D area latent space. Within this latent space, every point is a representation of a meaning of a word. Okay, so bear with me. We're in latent space and every point is a numerical representation. It's just a number or a set of numbers and it represents the meaning of a word. So when I ask ChatGPT, write me a speech in the voice of a school captain, it will take school captain, it will translate it into some numbers, and it will find the point in this latent space where the word school captain is. And it will use this point and the points around it and the words surrounding it to sound like a school captain. You see, in latent space, the closer two points are together, the more similar they are 
in meaning. That's how ChatGPT finds meaning around a concept and uses the right words when you want it to. Now, I just want to make one thing clear here. When I talk about meaning, I don't mean meaning in the sense that we understand things. ChatGPT doesn't actually have an understanding as like we do. It's more pattern matching between words based off of the data that it has seen. And I'm talking about billions and billions of, of text and words from the internet. But that is how it understands it is simply probability and pattern matching. So why am I telling you all of this? Why am I explaining to you how ChatGPT works? Well, two reasons. Number one, I think it's very important, as I said, to understand how this technology works. It is one of the most impactful technologies in the world. And whether directly or indirectly, it will affect all of us. But number two, and more importantly, I want you to understand something crucial. You, yes, you, every single one of you, including the students and the teachers and everybody else, are far more capable and far more intelligent than ChatGPT. You might be thinking, okay, how is that possible? I've used it and it's way smarter than me. Well, I'll give you a few facts. Let's take maths, for example. If I take a high school student and I give them an algebra question, they might get it wrong the first time or the second time, and eventually they'll get it right. Now, if I take that same student and that question and I give it to them the next day and the day after that, and I give it to them a hundred times or a thousand times, they will get it right every single time because fundamentally, they understand the question, they understand what it's asking, and they understand the concepts that they need to use to answer the question. ChatGPT doesn't work in that same way. It doesn't understand mathematics. It doesn't understand multiplication or algebra. It might get it wrong the first time. It might get it right the first time and wrong the next and then right again. It doesn't understand things the way humans do. Second point. ChatGPT isn't exactly smart in the way humans are. You see, it's like, as I said, it's really good at pattern matching. And so it just regurgitates information from the internet. Guess who put all the information on the internet in the first place? We did. And we, we know that all the information on the internet that we put up there isn't exactly accurate. So you can't just take an assignment and give it to ChatGPT and expect it to give you an accurate and reliable answer. It doesn't work that way. So if ChatGPT isn't you know, this incredible magical technology, then how can we use it? It is just a tool after all. Well, let's take a short trip down history lane and take some inspiration from some of the greatest minds this world has ever seen. We all know Albert Einstein and Isaac Newton and von Neumann, he helped create the atomic bomb, and uh, Richard Feynman. If you've done mathematics, you would have used Wolfram Alpha. He created that, that program. All of these physicists and thinkers, some of the greatest physicists in, in the history of humanity, have one particular thing in common. Private teachers. They were all taught one-on-one -on -one by some of the most educated people of their time. They could ask any question they wanted, any number of times, however they wanted. They could expand on certain concepts if they wanted to. Einstein was taught by his uncle, Jacob. In fact, he, the Einstein family had a family, a personal family tutor, Max. And it was him who introduced Einstein to geometry at the age of 12. I have a funny story to tell. When I was in school, unfortunately, I uh, wasn't exactly the smartest student. I didn't have the best marks. I <laughs> didn't win any awards or get any scholarships. I was incredibly average. And I was particularly bad at one subject, mathematics, which is kind of funny because I ended up doing software engineering, but we won't talk about that. And uh, I remember this, I had a, my maths teacher, she was a lovely teacher, and I just want to preface this story by saying this. She was a very nice teacher. She was very kind and accommodating. Shout out to Miss Thatch. But I remember this one day we went to class, 
And so we sat down and I was probably already half asleep, I can't remember. And she, she, and she went over a number of different concepts throughout the class, like 30, 40, 50 minutes. And after 50 minutes, she turns around and she looks at the class and she says, does anybody have any questions? Now I'm sitting there, half asleep, and I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what she just said like two minutes ago, let alone what she said 40 minutes ago. And if I put my hand up and ask a question about what she explained 40 minutes ago, she might just explode at me. So <laughs> I didn't put my hand up. The reality was I wasn't at the same level as my peers, as, my, as the other students there. Whether that was a practice problem or an understanding problem, that's besides the point. I wasn't at the same level. I learned at a different pace and in a different style. And that day, I didn't put my hand up. I didn't understand the work that was done. And unfortunately, my marks reflected that. Sorry, mom, if you're in the crowd somewhere. We all learn at a different pace and in a different style. This is where I believe AI can level the playing field. AI can be the ultimate equalizer. It can learn your learning style with every question. It can understand what kind of questions you like to ask. It can understand your strengths and weaknesses. It can explain any concept in any way, any number of times without judgment. The ultimate equalizer. AI can democratize access to information and expertise. It can break down the barriers that once left the curious minds wandering. With AI, students can access knowledge from physics to philosophy, from economics to genetic engineering, all at their fingertips. These AI models, once reserved for experts in high-tech labs, can now be accessed by anyone with an internet connection and a spark of curiosity. We have an obligation, a duty, to provide the best possible education to our youth, the future leaders and owners of this planet. The current education system takes a one-size-fits-all approach, but there's just one deathly problem with this approach. By catering to every single student, we also cater to none of them, and we don't have to take that approach anymore. Thank you very much.